My name is Chris Ryan. For 11 years, I served in the SAS, fighting in some of the most dangerous places on earth. Now I'm back in action, fighting alongside a new breed of cops, the elite police on the front line of the global war on crime. This is BOA, Poland's elite police force. Their speciality is urban policing. The enemy, Polish mafia gangs who control a vast organized network, trafficking drugs, arms, and people all over Europe. I'll be spending a week with this crack police squad, training with them as they prepare for their next mission. I've got seven days to prove to Boa that they can risk taking me on a live operation. It would be my chance to see the toughest cops in Poland fight back against their country's crime wave. This is what it's about. I'm in Warsaw, the capital of Poland. It's one of the fastest growing cities in Europe. There's big money to be made here. Buildings are going up everywhere. A sure sign that Warsaw is becoming one of the powerhouses of modern Europe. And wherever you find new money, organized crime is never far away. Poland does have seven borders, and I'm led to understand that it's a crossroads for organized crime, whether they're dealing in narcotics, weapons, vehicles, or human traffickers. Poland is the eastern border of the European Union. It's the perfect base for gangs smuggling goods from east to west the ideal transit point for dirty money, contraband cigarettes, illegal drugs and guns. I'm on my way to meet the crack police unit who are heading up the fight against Polish mafia gangs. Boa were trained by the Polish army's equivalent of the SAS, Grom. They carry out specialized high-risk operations that the normal police can't handle. I'm just um, pulling in now into uh, Boa's training facility or HQ. It actually uh, reminds me of uh, my time in the SES. Our training facility was very close to a, a populated area also, so uh, hopefully uh, it'll be very similar. I'm taken straight up to see the commander. Miło nam pana powitać w progach naszej jednostki, nocy i żeby to szkolenie i ta pobyt u nas był jak najbardziej owocny. Thanks very much. I'm really looking forward to uh, working with you for the rest of the week. My mentor is simply known as Marek. A veteran of the unit, he's the head of training, and in the secret squad is the only member allowed to show his face on camera. He knows my SES background, but I doubt he's going to show me any favors. It's straight down to business. The squad I'll be working with are already at the firing range. It's clear they want to check out my basic skills before letting me anywhere near their real training. Time to show them I can handle a gun. The weapon the guys are using is the MP5. This is the standard weapon uh, for the SES for CQB. The MP5 is one of the most accurate and reliable guns on the market. It's fearsome in CQB, close quarter battle, which makes it the weapon of choice for elite units all over the world. Probably one of the best weapon systems on the market. If it's good enough for the SES, it's good enough for anybody. You can create some damage with one of these. The secondary um, weapon system the guys have is the 9mm Glock. This is exactly what we used in the SES. Um, all your ammunition, flashbangs, radio is kept up high on your chest, secondary pistol on your leg, MP5 on your chest. It's with the Glock that they're going to test me out first. They leave me in no doubt what I'm up against. Their weapon skills is um, probably the best I've seen. So again, back under pressure, 
all eyes on and uh, it's not a great feeling. Although I can handle a weapon, I sense they are still wary of me. Like all elite units, they are unused to having an outsider in their midst. The squad was formed 30 years ago as a specialist police unit, but after the September 11th attacks, they were given an anti-terrorist role. While the terror threat remains, their training has also proved useful in combating organized crime. It's estimated Poland's gangs turn over $9 billion a year with over 400 different groups linking up to criminal cells all over Europe, in particular, the Russian and Italian Mafia. To understand the scale of what Boa are up against, I meet up with a man who decides when and where to deploy this elite police unit. The head of police at the Central Bureau of Investigation is a former Special Forces man, and just like the men of Boa, he insists on keeping his identity secret. I can say that we have information about four, five thousand members of organized crime, very active. And how many times per year would BOA deploy on an operation? About 100. We have no week without common activity. That's a hell of a workload for any unit. What makes it even tougher for BOA is they're working in the confines of a modern city like Warsaw. It's probably far more difficult operating in a city environment than, than any other environment um, for a special forces unit. Looking across there, you've got you know, blocks of flats there, heavily populated. Even trying to make an approach on these flats at night um, is, is, is very, very uh, difficult. Knowing how to deal with criminals holed up in flats and houses is an essential skill for any elite police officer. Boa trained for this in a place called the Killing House. If I want to join them on a live mission, this is where I'll really have to prove myself. Straight off, you can see a professional unit working together. These guys are obviously well trained. I'm in Warsaw, spending a week with Boa, Poland's elite SWAT unit. They're up against some 400 criminal gangs operating out of the country's main cities. Boa's speciality is urban policing, one of the most dangerous environments for any elite unit. And these boys are good. They're hand-picked from the best police officers in Poland. It normally takes three years to be accepted into this tight-knit squad. I've got seven days. The art of urban combat is knowing how to fight in close-quarter environments, like busy streets and flats. In Warsaw, that means fighting in huge estates built during the Soviet era. The perfect hideaway for criminal gangs and a nightmare for police trying to get at them. Right round the block of flats is an open area, so it's very, very difficult to get the guys in undetected. The next problem is how to get them inside and then locate the stronghold. It'll be really interesting to see these guys in action operating in these type of flats. Boa trained for close quarter battle in a building called the Killing House. The first thing that hit me was the smell, and it smells exactly the same as uh, the Killing Houses back in Hereford. It's um, all the spent cordite um, from guys being in here uh, shooting before. The Killing House is made up of tiny rooms replicating the inside of city flats. It's cramped and dark training us to be like a real operation. That's why we're using live ammo. Whilst doing this type of exercise, there is a great danger of getting blue on blue. That's your own troops firing on each other. I've got a guy up here with an AK-47. He's actually going to be firing live rounds over these guys' heads. It just adds a bit of uh, reality to it. The unit will run the operation as a team before I can join them. CQB is one of the most dangerous types of training and Merrick isn't taking any risks. Right, you can 
clear that. There's two operational flashbangs going off. The guy's moving in, clearing the targets. You can see how much confusion can be brought about doing a room clearance. The guys are talking to one another. They've cleared the rooms and they're ready to move on to the next one. Straight on here, engage the targets, clear the room. And they're getting ready to exit the building now. Very important. Come on. They're moving down, covering one another. Any threat that comes out, they'll be neutralised. You can see how important it is to have a good command and control, and the guys have got to be practised straight off. You can see a professional unit working together. Having seen the squad work as a team, it's now my turn to prove myself. Target practice is one thing, but this is on a whole other level. I can sense Merrick will be watching my every move, checking out whether I'm ready for Warsaw streets. Again, it's just to let the guys know that uh, I can handle a weapon and I understand room clearance for when it comes to the end of the week. Trust and safety are paramount for any unit, and that's what I've got to prove to these guys. Like it or not, I'm under scrutiny once again. Go. Open door, open door. Go, 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 go. Dead. Dead. Two dead. Out, out, out. Door open. Go, 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 go. Two, two tackles down! Room clear! Oh my god! Go, 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 go! Clear out! Clear out! Two! Two tackles down! Okay, that's the exercise working in pairs. You can see how fast it is. And the coordination, that's just two men going in, live rounds, moving around, engaging a target, coming out. We'll be moving on to other drills later on, but uh, I still haven't forgot the old uh, stuff from the SES. Thank you, thank you. After two intense days of training, I think I've proved myself to the team. No, but thank you, he's making an old man very well, happy. Sir, next to us. Uh, Initial worries about a newcomer to their squad start to disappear, and the guys open up. When you come uh, to this unit, you know that there's only one unit like this in, in Polish uh, police service, so you have to be the best. It's a chance for me to hear from the men about the reality of fighting crime on their very doorstep. The security of uh, the individuals within the unit and this is why you wear, you wear your mask to keep your identity is it, is it because you're, you're living so close to these gangs and criminals prawda e, mieszkamy w Warszawie jak no i tak naprawdę nasze otoczenie nie? nasi sąsiedzi nie wiedzą tak naprawdę co robimy my się nie chwalimy tym że pracujemy w jednostce specjalnej e, i dlatego chcemy pozostać w ukryciu jest e, bardzo duży problem właśnie ponieważ używają niebezpiecznej broni czego efektem była między innymi Magdalenka gdzie mm, Magdalenka. It's a small town that means a lot to these officers. In 2003, a firefight took place between Boa and two Mafia gang members. What happened there shook the squad to its very core and caused Boa to rethink the way it did business. At the heart of Boa HQ is a memorial to fallen men. Two men died in Magdalenka. Yep. Bardzo wpłynęła na pracę tej jednostki, na zmianę taktyki, na zmianę pewnego, pewnego toku szkolenia. The next day I leave Warsaw to find out what happened for myself. 40 BOA operators tried to storm the house of two gangsters. What they didn't know is these gangsters had a personal armory of 20 high-powered weapons. More importantly, the house and garden had been booby-trapped. End result? Two boy operators killed and 17 seriously injured. I'm going to meet two of the guys that were actually on this operation to talk me through it. The battle at Magdalenka is one of the most sensitive incidents in the Polish police's history. 
It's a pretty eerie sight. As you can see, the house is being raised to the ground and um, it's, it's fenced off and, and, and locked up. That night, Boa were on a mission to arrest two Mafia members holed up inside the villa. The men had links to the Russian Mafia and were suspects in the killing of a policeman. A police film unit captured the moment when 40 officers stormed the building. What Boa didn't know was that the men were ready for them and had booby-trapped the front door. Co jest dowodem, że byliśmy obserwowani i wiedzieli o tym, że jesteśmy już na terenie posesji. Once that explosion went off. Explosja raniła lewą stronę kończyny. Kilkanaście odłamków metalowych, śrub, gwoździ. This is some of the shrapnel that was packed in the explosion device and um, this is what hit one of the commanders all through his leg and blew him out. It's this sort of stuff, nails, screws, pieces of metal. You can imagine that just tearing through your body. Um, the, the damage these guys took during this operation was unbelievable. Uh, po tym jak nastąpiła eksplozja, rozpoczęła się wtedy regularna bitwa. Zostaliśmy urzuceni granatami z górnego okna, w wyniku którego eksplozji zginął nasz kolega właśnie. Byliśmy z tego budynku ostrzeliwani z różnego rodzaju broni. W sumie przestępcy zgromadzili tutaj 28 jednostek broni. After a 12-hour siege, it became clear the two men didn't want to be captured alive. Strzelali z różnych okien. Im było po prostu obojętne. Chodziło o to, żeby nas zabić. I'm a former soldier and without, you know, um, this question feeling or, or being stupid, uh, could you explain how you feel actually coming back to this site? Odbiera mowę po prostu. Mówię, to można powiedzieć na, na naszych dłoniach ginęli koledzy, dlatego to mówię, to yes. jest... Ale życie toczy się dalej, także musimy, musimy dojść do, do podobnej sytuacji, stawić czoło. Znaczy, po to jesteśmy. Taka, taka, tak, taka jest nasza One of the gang was shot dead. The other blew himself up. But by then, two police officers were mortally wounded. This operator actually dragged his injured colleague down to this spot, and this is where he passed away. I can assure you it's been a real difficult thing to return back here because all it's done has brought back bad memories and it's been hard for them. Meeting these modest men has helped me understand Boa even more. Magdalenka turned them into a tighter, more professional unit. They were caught off guard that night, but now they're better equipped, better trained and more motivated than ever to beat the crime gangs. The next day I get a chance to see just how intense their training has become since the tragedy at Magdalenka. It's vital training feels realistic, especially the element of surprise. As we arrive at an army airbase, none of us know what's in store. OK, we've just been briefed on the next operation. Uh, we're going to go and hit a building. This time we're going to make the approach to the stronghold via a helicopter and then we're going to fast rope onto the top of the building. Some of the guys are going to go over the side, plant charges and enter that way. Once it's cleared, then I can enter into the building following these guys in. When the Mafia are holed up in an apartment building, one of the best ways to attack the target is from the roof. And the only way to do this is from a fast rope, a 50-foot drop from a hovering chopper. It's brilliantly effective, but high risk. It was pioneered by the SES, but it's been 15 years since a fast rope for real. The old bravado's back. The only time my adrenaline comes is when I think I've lost my wallet. We're flying towards the target as low and as fast as possible. 
The last thing you want is to give the criminals advance warning of what you're about to do. And operating over a highly populated city makes it even more risky. This is another step up from the training I've done so far. There's no safety net here, just loads of pressure to fit in with the team. They're getting the rope set up to have sail over. Just getting themselves orientated at the moment. The guys are putting cover down to make sure everything's safe. We've been told there's two targets to neutralize in the buildings below. As the Absail team prepare for the element of surprise, the rest of us creep in to join the assault. Criminals down, our squad are out in under a minute. Waiting to be extracted can be the worst part of any mission. We're out in the open and vulnerable. I thought the day's training might be over, but I'm wrong. Training for operations on isolated buildings is one thing. It's quite another when you have to carry out a mission in the heart of a bustling city. Today's snap exercise is to rescue hostages held on a public bus. In this situation, the squad will work in tandem with a sniper unit. What we've got here is the sniper position. He's armed with a TRG-22, which is a 7.62 uh, high-velocity high rifle. Light and strong, this Finnish-made sniper rifle is renowned for its incredible long-range accuracy. It's the perfect gun for Boa's sniper unit operating in urban environments. This guy is the eyes for the commander. Once he gets onto the ground, he starts passing information back about the stronghold. He's telling the commander how many X-rays he can see, they're the terrorists, and how many hostages. Now, if the situation breaks down and it's deemed that it can only be resolved with violence or the team going in, them snipers will select a target. Hopefully, on an ideal situation, they'll take every terrorist out before the assaulters go in. These guys, they're highly trained in terms of camouflage, disappearing into the undergrowth or into buildings and then viewing without being seen. To storm a bus, neutralize the terrorists and not injure any hostages is the ultimate goal. Boa's training aims to make it as realistic as possible. What we've got is a, an assault over there with a heavy machine gun ready to uh, engage the target also. Yeah, there'll be a few flashbangs going off. The sniper initiates the attack.
in less than two minutes, Boa can storm a bus, take out the targets and get the hostages to safety. These guys aren't highly paid. They do the job because they believe in it and they want to make a safer Poland. These guys are very impressive and it's, it's quite humbling to work with them. The day's finally over and I'm told that I'm now on standby to go with Boa on a real live mission. What I don't know is that it's going to be tonight, hundreds of miles from Warsaw. You can see the guys are already here. The told up to the fucking eyeballs. Okay, we're on, we're on. I've been training with Boa, Poland's elite police unit. It's been an intense few days and they're a tight knit squad. But I now feel part of the team and know how they work. From the word go, these guys have impressed me with how they handle themselves. I'm now on standby to accompany them on a live operation. As night falls over Warsaw, we get the news we're going into action for real. I've just had a call from Boa and uh, there's a strong possibility there could be a mission going down. I've got absolutely no idea what it is or where it's going to happen. The commander just told me to be there for midnight where I'm going to be briefed. Uh, I'll be given time to kit up and then get out with these lads. This is what we're here for, to get out on a mission and see these lads operate. Our team has been hand-picked for the job. It's a sensitive mission. Details are only released as and when they are needed. Pokrótce. Podjeżdżamy z zespołem, jedziemy do miejscowości X. W tej chwili, w tej chwili nie mogę powiedzieć tego. Może posiadać na swoim terenie broń, ewentualnie jakieś materiały niebezpieczne, dlatego też jesteśmy użyci do ich zatrzymania. Całe działania przeprowadzają trzy zespoły. Alfa, Bravo, Charlie. Zespół Charlie zabezpiecza teren plus zabezpiecza z zewnątrz całą, całą posesję. Zespół Alfa, Bravo, zespoły szturmowe, których zadaniem jest opanowanie tego, tego budynku. This is what we know. We're going after a known arms dealer based in the south of the country. Arms trafficking is one of the country's biggest organized crime problems, and Boa need to catch this man before he flees the country. They're going in after a guy who's a, a criminal. He deals with weapons, and um, there's a good chance there could be weapons inside there. If he's got them, he might try and defend himself, uh, and so we could have uh, a situation where shots are fired. Uh, not only that, the guys have got to go in there and um, protect anybody who's not involved with the operation, i.e. kids or the standbys. I've been told at the moment um, to remain at this point here, but the commander on the ground, it'll be up to him whether they let me inside the building to see what happened. With that target holed up in a house, the Boa unit will have to draw on all their close quarter battle skills. Seeing the plans immediately reminds me of the villa Boa stormed on that infamous raid at Magdalenka. This squad is better equipped and better trained than those who fought that night. As we head out to meet the convoy, I'm not surprised to find the guys rehearsing their mission one more time. The three teams now are just running through the operation. It helps with timing for moving towards a target and then extracting from a target. And it just helps with equipment. You might have a, you know, a new radio or you know, a new weapon system. And, and as you're moving in there, you'll just hear something rattle or, or move and it'll not be right. Or getting into a vehicle, you might get stuck. It's just little things like that uh, that make the main operation work a lot better if you square them away early. Boa are a rapid reaction unit. They respond to intelligence from other police units or government agencies. So uh, where, where does the intelligence come from that you're acting on tonight? 
Informacje tą uzyskujemy od naszego zleceniodawcy, czyli w tym wypadku Centralnego Biura Śledczego. Oni są firmą, która rozpracowuje tego typu ludzi, tego typu przestępców i wskazuje nam. My mamy tylko pojechać i, że tak powiem, sfinalizować całą sprawę, zatrzymać, zatrzymać wskazane przez nich osoby. Do you know how many, um, how many other people will be in the house? Czego jedna osoba, nasz figurant, którą mamy zatrzymać, e, prawdopodobnie troje dzieci e, i osoby, osoby dodatkowe, rodzice, e, jakaś tam szwagierka. I tak dla nich będzie to jakieś tam wydarzenie. No. Myślę, niezbyt przyjemne. It makes the job really, really difficult uh, when you're going after one guy and he's surrounded by people who have got probably, you know, nothing to do with it. It's 1am and with final preparations over, we begin to move out. The man we're after is a high value target. Merrick is still only giving out information on a need to know basis. All he has said is we're traveling hundreds of miles away from Warsaw to a final briefing where we will be given mission updates. When I was in the SAS, the majority of our raids took place when targets were asleep and Boa followed the same tactics. A target, disorientated from sleep, reacts less quickly. It can give the storming unit valuable extra seconds in which to get the job done safely and securely. After a three-hour drive into the southeast of the country, we arrive at a police station near the city of Lublin. But before we can be briefed, other officers start to arrive. Whilst we've been on the road, two other BOA teams have been called in to join the mission. It becomes clear the operation is bigger than first thought, and we're told to wait in our vehicle. At the briefing, I'm detailed with securing the boundary of the house, alongside my mentor Merrick. And with 50 BOA men now on site, the operation suddenly begins to move at pace. The night mission has expanded to include the arrest of two other suspects who are thought to be linked to the arms dealer. The other two units head off to the west while our 12 vehicle convoy heads towards the arms dealer's villa. There's obviously a coordinated attack here with the other groups that we saw back at the uh, police HQ. So they'll probably be hitting the same gang at exactly the same time. The reason for this is so nobody can warn anybody that uh, have been rumbled. This is just like old times there, driving in a convoy uh, towards a target. Uh, slightly aggressive on the road. Uh, the guys aren't letting anybody cut the convoy in two. We're all kitted up now, got the hard hats on, Kevlar on, and the lads are all tooled up uh, wet with weaponry. Apparently the guys aren't going to use gas or they've got the capabilities. It just shows um, this, this guy must be a high value target and fucking dangerous. And the dog is just over there. So we'll just be hitting them straight away. We're gonna follow them to assault groups. We've got the air detectives behind us. See the guys are already here. They're tooled up to the fucking eyeballs. The guys have got the respirators on. Um, they've got all the MOE kit, the door jar, all the crowbars. That's the first team going in on target. They've secured the area. They put the protection out. The lads are around the target actually now. And these are the two of the remaining assault groups that's gonna go in, hit the door and in the balcony where the window is. Attack, attack. Attack, attack. Run. That's the lads there, they're just in on target now. Uh, you've heard the flashbangs going off. You can see them now, they're moving in on the door. The lads are on the windowsill there. Knock, knock. 
That's it, guys. They're in there. The lads have entered through the door. You can see there, they're already in the building. They're upstairs now. And the lads are going through. There's obviously somebody upstairs there uh, locked in there. I can hear the guys banging on the door to get into one of the rooms. Um, if they don't open, I'll have the door kicked in. It was important to get the team in there, secure the building or any exit points. So if anybody did do a runner, you'd catch them, apprehend them, and then the team moved in. Now look at this straight away. The guys don't fuck around, you know. They're aware of the situation. This guy's just turned up, he's fucking stopped. And uh, look at this, the guys are around him. Yeah. You know, they've got cover on them. Uh, he could have a pistol, he could have a weapon, anything. And the lads are just, just covering their asses and uh, making sure everything's secure there. That guy there was a curious neighbour, uh, rocked up to see what was happening. He was checked, the guys covered them. That's what I mean when I say this unit's a professional unit. As soon as a car comes, one of these lads is turning around and just checking. Another car's coming in, and he's just covering his ass. Look at this, he's just covering him. They're well aware of the surroundings. Everything's okay? Just reported they they seized two men, two women, and one child. We're still waiting because the guys need to check the surrounding area. Yeah, the guys are moving in there now. The Wodzący, całą grupą, z mową poszedł do budynku, żeby już ocenić sytuację. Somebody's somebody's cracking off inside. Somebody's bitching. It's probably that poor woman. She just had a fucking door kicked in. The stress of the situation has caused a problem inside the house. The arms dealer's wife has requested an ambulance. This guy deals and moves weapons. These weapons are used to kill these policemen, you know, and, and it's paramount that you stop people like this who are bringing weapons in, pushing them, and then getting them on the streets. Um, it might seem heavy-handed, but it ain't. You need this type of manpower to carry this type of operation off successfully and safely. The unit does a final search of the outbuildings. As the operation continues, it becomes clear that the arms dealer's wife has had little more than a scare. It's a success for these lads because they've gone in, they've secured the building, they've made the arrests, and nobody has been injured. Everybody is safe and sound in a controlled environment. The villa is declared a crime scene. And at dawn, scene of crime officers enter the house. We stay outside so as not to contaminate any evidence. It was the same in the SAS. We were the strike unit brought in to detain any suspects. But it was the regular police officers who gathered evidence and established a case. Basically, that's it. The muscle end of the job or the operation is over. Um, all the guys now will exfil out and we'll uh, get back to HQ and, uh, and leave it to the civil police to make their arrests and uh, check the house for the weapons. The BOA unit leaves the scene before our own security can be jeopardised. Tension is high. The end of any mission can be one of the most dangerous times. It's important that we don't let a guard down. As you can see, the lads just don't switch off after an operation. The guys are still um, coming off the, uh, off the target area. Uh, they're packing up. The lads are still giving protection to one another. Somebody's standing there with a weapon. One thing, after an operation, your adrenaline comes down, you tend to switch off for quite a bit, and uh, you can be caught out right at the end. Marek gets the BOA unit into the vehicles. It's daylight, and he can't afford to compromise anyone's identity. We still don't know whether the mission has been a success. As we leave, details of what was found in the house begin to emerge. I've been on a mission with Poland's elite police unit, BOA, raiding the house of a suspected arms dealer. After a full search, officers found what they were looking for, an arms stash and 6,000 rounds of ammunition. It's enough evidence to arrest the suspect. I've been impressed with the men of this squad. 
They aren't paid any better than Poland's regular police, but they consistently put themselves on the line against traffickers and organized criminals all over the country. The experience has brought back memories of the dangers of working in an urban environment. And I've learned how this squad has reinvented themselves after the pain of losing men at Magdalenka. They're a secretive unit, wary of outsiders, but I've been allowed into the squad and have witnessed the commitment they bring to their job. It's now seven o'clock in the morning. Um, Merck's just given us the day off to turn in tomorrow, but that's the life of these guys. Um, you know, it's a three hour drive back to Warsaw. These lads will get their heads down if they're not called out on another operation. And, and that's it, you know, um, that's what they have to do. But uh, that's life in Boa. In an ever changing Europe, Poland is set to play a bigger role but with greater influence comes greater responsibility. Countries in Western Europe want to see that Poland is tackling organized crime. And from what I've seen, BOA are making that happen. Before I leave, I want to speak to Marek about the squad and how he sees the unit progressing. Zaczęliśmy, zaczęliśmy iść do przodu i miejmy nadzieję, że potrwa to, to jeszcze długo. Tym bardziej, że no wkrótce przynajmniej duża impreza, jaką jest chociażby Euro 2012, gdzie również musimy być przygotowani na ewentualne zagrożenie w tym, w tym czasie. I would just like to say, um, out of all the police units that I've worked with, your unit and your men are the most like the British SAS. It's just been like, you know, I'm back in my old unit. It's been a very enjoyable week and it's been great to work with such professional men. Chciałbym Ci wręczyć emblemat naszej jednostki, żebyś mógł wspominać czas, który spędziłeś tutaj. Do Sasu nam jeszcze daleko, generalnie, ale jest to dla nas wzorzec, na którym, na którym bazujemy. Jest dla nas miło gościć takiej klasy zawodnika jak ty. After the break, when an experiment goes wrong, the whole cast of a holodeck western become clones of Data, Star Trek The Next Generation.